This is our regular monthly meeting of the South County EMS Board of Oversight. And Zach? Uh, what time are we calling me in order? 1801? Sure. Yes. Okay, great. Um, last month minutes. Entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Woo! Love it. Zach, can you... Director's report. Director's report. Where did I put my copy? I always have a nice copy. I mean, not a sta copy? No, not stapled copy, because I'm always talking about it. Okay. Um, so, staffing. Um, past couple days, I mentioned in the last report that we had the new video laryngoscope system, so we did an in-service training for that this week. We got about half of our advanced providers trained on it. Um, they're the ones available, um, and the other half will be trained um, separately as they come in. So those will be deployed shortly um, and those trained and cleared on it will be able to utilize them. The manufacturer uh, trainer who came in to do that also is the same company that provides our um, easy I.O. drills which are actually it's a drill that we can drill into your bone if we can't get an IV. So, so if you're in cardiac arrest and your veins are collapsed we can use that. Um, with medicine, science is always changing, so while he was there, yeah, we've had it for a while, and while he was there, he did a refresher and gave us the updated information on the science um, and some um, expanded kind of abilities for it. So that was, so Adam there was super beneficial, so um, that was really great. So this video laryngoscope basically has a camera down on the end of it? So That's exactly it, yeah. So <clears throat> traditionally with the laryngoscope, you'd have to, you're outside of their body, so you have to basically move their jaw and their tongue up and out of the way. You have to get the anatomy up and out of the way in order for you to see down their windpipe. With the video laryngoscope, because there's a camera at the end, you don't have to move their anatomy because you can see down inside. So you just slide it in. It's a lot less jarring to the patient, and the camera is actually right up front, and you can watch it go right into the cords, and then it's incredible, absolutely wow, incredible. That's so, awesome. Um, in that picture, I don't know if you can kind of see it in the black and white, um, but that's paramedic treats Emerson. She's getting ready to insert it into the mouth, and that's the camera right at the top. It almost looks like a little iPhone, just a little yeah. touch screen, um, and uh, does some pretty great stuff. So, great. Um, and then, as well as staffing goes, you know, we're trying to uh, get fully up to speed with annual employee reviews. Um, my plan is to have those done on a calendar year basis. Um, so by the first of the year, I want to roll out the first one for all the full-time staff. The purpose being to identify everybody's strengths um, and then goals for the, for the next 12 months for them. So I um, hope to have that pretty soon. I know John Baturik has been working um, on uh, the police chief in Deerfield on a draft version that is uh, more applicable for our environment. So hoping to get that in. Um, the MCI drill that we did that I mentioned last month went really, really well. We were the only uh, pre-hospital ambulance service um, there, um, and we were able to supply that to the hospital staff. Then uh, local nursing students also participated. They played patients, so we um, fake transported them from the lower parking lot up into the ED and handed care off, so that was really good. Also, while I was there, I gave a just-in-time training for triaging um, for all the players um, in the hospital as far as that emergency drill goes. So they got brought up to speed with triage, refresh on that, kind of hearing it firsthand from the people that use it um, most often. Um, and, and that was great. And, and kind of seeing how, what they can expect from EMS, that this is what we're playing with and how to according with that. I'm, I'm really thankful that you did that because, um, you know, that was the one sad thing about the FEMA drill being canceled was yeah. the opportunity to do the MCI drill. So, I am really appreciative of you volunteering to um, participate and to actually do all that stuff because, um, you know, the plans just, when they're on the shelf, it's not the same. So, thank you for that. And uh, speaking of the MCI plan, Franklin County, uh, we're really far ahead as far as an MCI plan goes, and the state has recognized that. So, the plan that Franklin County has developed, the region, so all the western counties in Massachusetts 
have adopted it into a larger plan. So they're basically taking what we developed, making it into a larger plan, and we'll do county specific stuff. So um, we are expecting a large scale MCI drill to come of that, incorporating the larger regional plan. But I'm really thankful. And, and speaking of drills, um, I just want to say um, we had the Frontier EDS EOC tabletop drill November 6th, and um, Zach came yeah. and participated. And um, uh, it was very, it went really, really well. We had a good, really up to date discussion. Um, we're updating all the volunteer lists. And, um, but if it wasn't for Zach right. um, being, Participating with um, you know the highway departments and the police departments, it, it wouldn't have been the same. So right. um, it was more real life, and um, at, he had great um, comments to in the yep. participation. Mm -hmm. And I also appreciate you um, helping our new operations chief um, by shadowing her or helping her a lot. It, was, it was a big step to take for her. It's brand new mm -hmm. and. Um, so I appreciate it, Zach. Yeah, of course. Um, Tre and Trevor, the, Trevor was there too. And <laughs> he was on the um, DPH's web EOC for us. And so it was really good practice for all of us. And we used our new rough book, uh, or no, tough book, what did I say, rough book? Tough book that we got on a grant for the EDS, so the Frontier EDS. So that really went well. All right. Um, I most recent Franklin County EMS committee meeting um, was this past Monday. Uh, we identified this is something that I mentioned previously last month, um, working with the Colerain EMS director. The fire service in Franklin County does a very good job of regionalizing specialty stuff. So there's an IMAT team. So in a large disaster, you can request them, um, and just as incident management, we have the dive rescue team, which is regionally people that are trained in that type of thing. Um, and it goes on and on. Fire service does a great job. On the EMS side, we're very autonomous. We kind of do our own thing and we don't coordinate on a larger um, size. So myself and some others, we're coordinating. We're going to do basically a subcommittee of the Franklin County EMS committee to identify the needs of EMS in the county. So uh, one extreme is acts of violence, the, you know, the active shooter, things like that, what would we do in an incident like that, um, all the way down to just maybe it's a difficult patient extrication, um, you know, and so are there specialized equipment that we could train and deploy. Um, so identify those needs and then um, I've spoken to FERCOG about this as well. Um, they're interested in helping us out with this idea and basically just being a better asset for all of the county. So. Right. You know, down in South County and maybe in West County have assets that are deployed and can respond to specific types of emergencies anywhere in the, in the area. So um, that's Great coming. Um, and uh, we have launched uh, the uh, South County EMS website. Um, it's SOCEMS, S-O-C-E-M-S dot O-R-G. Um, is it based upon the Waitley? It is not. I was unable to coordinate that she was very busy, um, and... Wait, so we're incurring an additional cost. This was, I, I, I purchased this domain myself. Um, I paid, yeah, the, the so... The design's already there. I mean, I, I, I honestly don't get this, Zach, because the point is for easy access. People in the three towns are accustomed to going to their town, respective town's website for information or to be able to link, and, and, and obviously URLs can, can link. Mm -hmm. Why are we creating this standalone thing? Uh, because the, the mechanism to get things on these town websites is not easy or move fast enough for the types of things that I've been looking you to do. You can manage it yourself. I, I've been unable to coordinate with anybody as far as getting access or learning how to manage those things. I, did have, I do have some experience with website stuff, so I just wanted to get something um, as far as if you do a Google search, um, something like that, people are interested in employment or the services we offer, they can, they can just go to the website. Um, it currently does link back to the respective town websites. So you can click on... Yeah, so, yeah, so as far as like meeting minutes uh, right now, the agendas, things like that, that are being hosted, the official postings, those are all linked to from the website. So. 
this acts as like a jumping off page, especially for our employees where we have separate patient care reports, CQI stuff. A simple website you can just go to and then from there you can find these other resources. And then on uh, the town websites, we just have a link right to this. Um, we can get a we, can we, we could, them. yes. We yeah, that's not something like I said that I have access to right now. Okay. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, well I know we're working on ours because Keith's yeah. working on it today, as a matter of fact. And okay. we should have we'll put a link on yeah, to Zach's website. I'll make sure um, he gets that. Yeah, you know, right right after we had talked last month, I tried to coordinate a time to... Well, because I got an email from you or someone saying that we were all set. That, you, that it had been all coordinated. Uh, it, it, I think it was... Uh, we reached out and she was too busy to deal with it at that time and that we would hook back up at a later time where she could, would be available to do that training and access with me. And um, I got impatient. So... Um, okay. It is what it is. Uh, the facility stuff, uh, from what I can see from our side of the parking lot, looks like construction uh, is continuing. Uh, I know there's going to be, you know, aside from the incidentals um, that are going to be, you know, office furniture or pots and pans, things like that, the staff are starting to develop three categories of items um, that, or at least, develop a list of things that we anticipate we will need for the new facility and then categorize them in three different ways. So one would be items that the department is going to purchase um, for the facility. So desks, tables, things like that, or at least acquire somehow. It'll be the department responsibility. Then there's a list of things that the department members think that they can work towards getting donations. Um, maybe you know more furniture or like a refrigerator, microwave, things like that. And then the third category would be items that the department members um, would want to pitch in themselves and purchase for themselves for that space. So we're working on that list right now. The three large expenses um, that I'm anticipating immediately that would be department uh, issues would be a generator, emergency generator, would be the uh, yes. diesel fumes um, capture system, since we do have people staying in the building 24-7 and access, uh, control, and security. So um, locks, um, cameras, things like that. So th with those three items, I have a question for Wendy Foxman about how do we pay for these things? Um, for the current fiscal year, we had submitted a capital request for miscellaneous items. and. The capital committee was correct in saying if there's no specific item and specific cost associated with it, it's not in their purview to, you know, recommend or not recommend. But that left us kind of in a limbo as far as this expenses go. Uh, it seems that the agreement is that we will spend the money that we had in retained earnings for these purposes. Um, but I don't know. I'm not experienced enough to know what the mechanism is for spending that money now that. You know, it's it's come time to start. Well, what we want to do is for capital, you need to just submit um, for December first um, a capital request for these three items. So, but th but does that mean that it's yeah. going to be in the FY19 budget? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we can't purchase these things until after July first. Well, what we want to, um, you know, you're right. Yes, we can. Uh, we we've already. Um, you know what, let me, well, let's start you and This I is, you know, this is the type of thing I don't know, and I, I've got some ideas about what probably we can't do, but I just don't know if there's a mechanism for it. Well, keep in it. mind that if you purchase something, Zach, and I'm not saying anything you don't know, if you purchase something with money that we have on hand, why would the capital, zip, capital, uh, Because all capital purchases have to be, I mean, that's part of our... No, that's my point, though. Why would you fund it? No, 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 we would, um... We have to prove it. it show, what it is is Zach has to show three quotes that he's getting. Right, right, but it has to go to town meeting. I guess you're, maybe you're missing my point. I, I, he wants to buy it now. Right. So An ordinary capital request that is submitted December 1st would ultimately find its way to town meeting in April. Right. It wouldn't be available until July 1st. So that's not... Right, and he it sounds like he wants it now. And he does. And that, so we have to figure out how we're going to check off our box without 
Right. You have the money. It's not like mm -hmm. it's not like right. it's just not gonna be a, it's not gonna be a it's not gonna be a, a traditional capital right. request on your town meeting floor. Right. right. So what we have to do is go through and just so we just, we're still obviously getting three quotes. Have to go through, right? yeah. Well, there'd so be the normal. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. that normal process, absolutely. Right. And then um, we decide. Right, but it, you know, I don't want to. And we had a. And, and, and wasn't there a, a board constituted here to kind of help with some of that, or did we get off the ground on that, or do we still need to kind of work on that? Oh, uh, oh that's there's right. a building subcommittee. A building yeah. subcommittee, yeah. and then that, that committee right? would then yeah. probably decide. Okay, so Zach, what I would do is get your quotes together for yep. those two things, or three things. Yep. Have Bobby look at it, and then get it to Wendy and I, and then Trevor and I can bring it forward at the capital meeting. Yeah, I, you know, it, my concern being that if this exhaust system is needed for health and safety and the building's completed, say, March, Right, we don't want to wait. No, no, no. That, that, that's where that. my, you know, the yeah. process for, you know, submitting we can, we can requests, I get that, that stuff. I'm we'll, just, we'll figure that we'll out. We'll start it out so that nobody is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll run in. And how do we know there's an exhaust need to um, the building? Well, it would be a code, wouldn't it be a code requirement? But why wouldn't that be part of the building? Um, Original construction. I, my understanding is that it's not going to be included in the building because it's not an integral part of the building. It is not unlike a washer or a dryer okay, or something. I, you know what? I'm not comfortable with this conversation because that information should not be anything that you know. I, I'll it just shouldn't be. Oh yeah, I, I don't know for and certain. My understanding, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we don't. No, you do. We're talking about it. Well, Carolyn. No. We don't actually. We don't know. Yeah, That's no. why I said we have to find out. Because All right. We didn't we're not going to. I don't. I'm not comfortable talking about this. Like, okay. Because it's 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 dangerously close to. I know like, emergency generator is not included because that's going to be a separate outside item, okay. and we want that. We really don't know what we're going to get, right? Until we get <laughs> set of keys. We do. No, we don't. No, we do. We don't. How would you? I mean, we haven't talked to anybody, John. Okay. But this. Have is, you? Well, then how would we know? Okay. We'll All right. We'll find out when All we right, get a set of keys, right? So, moving on. Uh, final debt collection write-off policy is included. Um, I corrected the language. I tweaked some things. Um, to answer some previous questions, those, uh, the poverty guidelines that are listed in that financial hardship form, um, that is based the, off of the, let me get, make sure I get this right. Um, Hill Burton free and reduced um, cost health care guidelines by the U.S. Health Resources and Services Administration, so the HRSA. So this is um, the Hill Burton um, <coughs> guidelines refer to facilities that are required by law to offer um, reduced or low cost. So those are established guidelines by the U.S. government. They refer back to the federal U.S. government poverty line, so the numbers associated in that hardship form are twice that. So, is that form in here? The form is not in here. It's, I'll find it. I can quote that for you in a second. Um, so, the premise being, if you, as written in this policy, you request financial hardship if your family income is equal to or less than those guidelines, you would be considered for um, full cancellation of your funds. The guidelines also allow for people who submit for financial hardship do not qualify per these guidelines, but the Board of Oversight, the subcommittee that is reviewing these things, feel that they articulated a reason that would make us feel that they still cannot meet the, the, the bill assessment. So these guidelines allow for that bill to be reduced to the, let me show you get the phrase right, um, the current Medicaid rate of reimbursement. Um, so kind of an in-between. So it's not 100% yes or 100% no. 
um, and allows for some subjectivity based on articulable reasons. Um, and then beyond that, it just follows the flow chart that we've already looked at as far as uh, reporting. Um, under collections, why would I, I worry about having the term may have maybe taken small things quite as opposed to will? You don't want to leave any ambiguity or subjectivity if if they're not deemed as being hardship. Mm -hmm. You will be taken to small claims court. Why would we say may? Because then someone's going to say, why did you take that per why, why did you not take that person to small claims court, but you took me to small claims court? No hardship. Right. Uh, it, right. It, it's got to be cut and dry. Otherwise, people are going to say, you guys are playing favorites, you sure. guys are doing this and that. So both of those mays, Jonathan? <coughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, both of those, uh, they all include mays when it comes to determining financial hardship and disposition like that. And the court costs are going to pay, be paid, and, and maybe you don't have to state that in here because it's automatic, I don't know, mm -hmm. but and if you're found to be in whatever, you're going to pay the town's court costs. Mm -hmm. Now that may be not automatic, and we don't worry about it, but we should find out because we shouldn't be on the hook for Filing. For, for the costs of, of, of an attorney yeah. and, and the costs that a court is going to, if they're found to be negligent. Or whatever the term is. Funds, but don't right. to pay. They've got to pay art. So I think that has to be clearly stated sure. here. So there's no ambiguity. The other question that I had was that this only go ahead. Was that this because uh, there was there was a, on the first one patients could make no attempt to reconcile. That was a will be taken and then will have a debt uh, reported. And then there's that second paragraph. Is that what you're talking about too? Both. Yeah. Both of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. You know, it, it, and, and address it on a case-by-case -case basis, but I don't understand why, if there's no financial hardship found, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis only in that we have to take each case to small claims court. Mm -hmm. it, it, sh you're opening up yeah, yeah, yeah. a problem by, by leaving yeah. any doubt as to what. Again, I'm using the, the, the Waitley dog license process. Right. right. You're late in your dog license fee. Guess what? We're going to take you to court. Yeah. Um, and you're going to lose. <laughs> you yeah. just are. Those, those are the rules. Right. Yeah. You know, I was, my, my thought was if somebody, say, submits for financial hardship because they just lost their job, you know, and their annual income up to that point. Totally get it. Yeah. And so I'm trying to, like, for. To totally yeah. get that. But then that would be a case where we would find financial hardship. But in any case where there is no financial hardship found by okay. yeah. the process yep. that you st stipulated or our own internal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got and it. Yeah. Fact finding. It, it shouldn't be a maybe. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people will say you're playing favorites. The the other question that I had, and this only addresses having to write off for lack of a better term, when a patient can't pay. And most of the times this is going to insurance. There, there aren't that many instances, to my knowledge, where the individual is on the hook. And, and there has to be, we're gonna, it will come to us, let, let's, use, let's use Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Medicaid pays, I forget what your chart said, 40 cents on the dollar, whatever. Yeah. You know, we say it costs a dollar. They're gonna pay us 40 cents. We are going to have to write off that 60 cents. So the, this, this answers the other question we had last month, which was, you know how we talked about that insurance, like that 94, 98, why not 100? Mm -hmm. That difference is co-pays and deductibles. So that would be a situation in which the patient is responsible for... If they have a deductible. Yes, right. If, if they are a Medicaid patient, we know that going in, so we're only billing them 
than Medicaid allowable. So we're not billing them the full amount yet. So there shouldn't be a big... Right, but you're still billing Medicaid. You're billing right. Medicaid, you're billing Blue Cross, you're billing all those Correct. things. Correct, yes. They're, you know they're not going to pay the full cost that it, we incurred to, to deliver the service. They're going to pay a percentage of it. Correct. And, and yep. they're going to have to write that off. For a formal vote of yes, yes, yes. Well, no, it doesn't get written off because you only you only ever loaded in that forty cents. Yeah, you, know, you look at least in when in Waitley, we loaded in the full amount and then we said we're not gonna realize the full amount. I don't think we so loaded in the full amount. No, well, full I mean, I because we have to we, we have to show what our costs are. Well, we were doing that under the Deerfield in that. I mean, our costs. And that's why we had this huge amount to to write off. Right. And but. But we knew if they were Medicaid parent patients, we were never going to collect. Or Blue Cross. Or right. private insurance. It's, it's a higher percentage, but it's still. Right. So I, you already know what it is. So I think what we did. I, our costs of doing business is reflected in the budget. And then we estimate our, our billing returns this, this upcoming fiscal year at, at $500,000. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strongly recommend that we bill the insurance company. I don't care whether it's Medicaid, yeah. whatever. Our full cost, then on because then on a case by case basis, they will determine how much they are going to pay us, and we'll get a statement to that effect with a check or however the accounting mechanism works. Then, because because it won't be always that exact forty percent. We might get forty one percent. We might it it's going yeah. to vary, but they need to know what our cost is. The insurance companies need to know what our costs are. I, yeah, I mean, we're billing based on the contractual, like Blue Cross Blue Shield says you will get $50 for an IV. So if we do an IV, we bill $50. I bill for the full amount, and then they're going to pay whatever they choose to pay. Right. You never know I'm whether sure they're going to pay a little bit now. more, but you should bill the entire amount. And then if we have to make a vote saying, yeah, we're going to have to write off X. Yeah, I, this is gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more research because we're starting getting. We're getting into the purview of the. I'm sorry. I think. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm worried that it's gonna be. Uh, you can't just do that. We did it. I mean, it was it was common practice. This is what we did. Okay. It took up a well, monthly. You know, but tenor. what I'm saying is, we're not doing that now, and and you just can't switch. I mean, just just call Comstar and see what. I mean, I don't know if we can do that. I mean, because it's set up. Like Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to pay this much, so that's going to be billed out. We don't have a like. We don't have a. a, a but then Blue Cross Blue Shield has you know, no idea what it's right. truly I think, costing us. Really? I think okay. it gets billed out at X, Y, and Z because that's what we charge, and then whatever insurance company the person has. We usually see that. On that's what you get paid. The benefits, right? And the like, rest uh, is. The, the, well, exactly. Yeah, it's $900. Dollars, exactly. We picked up X, you paid Y, and then this is the balance. And, and, but the whole, the whole the shooting match yeah, was we were off so much Yes, so right. Correct. And they knew they were only going to get And they knew it. So that's, that's exactly my point. Exactly. Yes, yes. So this is, this is what we're doing. So we have, for, for each one of these, we have the total charges. That's what it costs. But that's that's what it costs. Yes, 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 yes. Well, and, then we have, and then we have the total allowable per... Fine. So, so the difference is what you're I want, referring I want, to. I want the whoever the carrier is yep. to be charged the full amount, and then they will pay whatever what their pay. formula pays. Because if we don't do that, l let's say we run into someone who's who's not insured mm -hmm. for whatever reason. How can we justify billing them? 100%, when we don't even pay, bill, bill the insurance companies 100%. It, we need to be consistent with billing in full, and then the insurance companies, Medicaid, whatever, yeah. will will pay whatever they choose to pay. And if we have to write it off and take 10 minutes in doing so, that's what it goes. Yeah, let me, let me double check with Comstar, see exactly what's happening mm -hmm. right now, um, because, yeah, this is getting into their expertise, and I just want to make sure before I say anything that's incorrect that... Okay, but don't make any decisions until we have oh, a yeah, discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. about this. Yeah. Because I, again, this is just based upon my experience I, in Waitley. I, 
quite frankly, that might be what's happening now, and I'm just misinterpreting mm -hmm. what's happening because of the way it's being reported back. So I'll try to figure that out. So, but but Zach, to take it a step forward, once you find that out, we may need to put a paragraph in here about yep. what happens to non reimbursed expenses from carriers, be it public or private. Oof. Sorry, it didn't work for you, but. No, no, it's fine. I just, having to, I just realized we had this whole discussion and I haven't been writing anything down as far as minutes go. Um, okay, I guess we'll vote on the, we'll, we'll try to vote on the next one. Yeah. With more information. And an amended yeah. document. Thank you for your work, Zach, on it, though. Hey, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just making some notes there so I can yeah. fill in the okay. gaps. Go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, um, I handed out a first draft of the FY19 budget. How exciting. Um, uh, the major differences you'll see, I, there's some ups and downs through um, the expenses based on our history to date. Um, I increased the expected revenue from services um, to $500,000 from four hundred and fifty. Um, I think that's a pretty safe bet. I think that's a safe bet too. Um, Where is this? I'm sorry. Uh, second page at the bottom, revenue from services and retained earnings. Um, uh, that's just from um, when, when we bill patients and insurance companies. Um, we had, I had increased it previously last year, um, and I think based on previous years, FY 17 and 18, especially since we were much more efficient, we're looking to be like five hundred and fifty thousand dollars as far as revenue goes from billing for those two years. So I think five hundred thousand, um, ten percent um, less uh, is appropriate for that. Uh, the other big change you'll notice is uh, on the salaries and wages. Um, three good reasons for that jump. Um, one is the classification compensation upgrade that was voted on or change in the compensation plan uh, last year. In FY18, we actually under budgeted. We, I underestimated that. So there's about a twelve or thirteen thousand dollar difference um, that we were short on that. There's also the increase in shift differential that was approved um, in Deerfield. It is now a dollar for 3 to 11 p.m. and a dollar 50 per hour from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, so seven days a week, 52 days a year, 52 weeks a year, that equals um, another $15,000. Um, so right there, that created a jump in the salary line item, um, a little shy of 30000 And then the remainder is a 2% COLA increase to the salaries um, as basically a placeholder. I know the personnel committee is um, still looking at that in Deerfield. So I plugged that in um, are, to hold that. Are the 15, 16, 17, and 18 numbers that are listed here your plan or your actual? Actual. They are actual. Yes. Okay. Um, also, the employee benefits, um, this is that historical discrepancy between what I calculate based on the formulas and what we end up getting charged. Um, I'm still waiting for numbers from the clerk's office in Deerfield as far as what she estimates. Um, last year, it was only 99000 instead of the 162. Um, and the year before that, it was like 102,000 instead of the 144. 
Um, so I think once I get the numbers from her, uh, we can expect to see probably a $50,000 drop just on that benefits line item. Um, but again, still waiting for her since she's the one who's going to have to write that check. Insurance is going up though. We just don't know. We don't have a firm percentage yet, but it's mm -hmm. much higher than it has been in the sure. past. Uh, let's see. That's the sad. That just because we spent down that We we voted to take our retain our which we might. But this is really what this. Yeah. Really, what the true cost was. Um, so this is an anomaly this year. Yeah. So the the assessment to the towns um, on this draft budget did jump. That is because there are no retained earnings spent down. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, applied to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, as cert as far as the certified retained earnings, we have um, we have four hundred and twelve thousand three hundred and eighty two. Uh, in the enterprise fund, this is on a, I think the next page. Um, of that, one hundred and eight thousand was money that we had already earmarked for um, the replacement of the ambulance. Okay. Um, and then it, I put in an additional fifty-seven thousand dollars for this upcoming fiscal year as more of that seed money into that. Into um, the difference being. Uh, two hundred and forty-seven thousand three hundred eighty-two dollars, um, not earmarked for anything as far as uh, the FY19 budget. And that's what we're thinking of using, or is that what we're thinking of? Possibly yes, that, that, some of that for the yes, that we could draw budget. from that in order that's to um, apply towards the FY19 um, budget, and uh, and um, and our stuff at the. Building or is that a different? No, that is included in that amount. That is included in that amount. So, if we would like to spend retained earnings to purchase items for the building, it needs to come out of that. Out number. of that two forty-seven. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, can can we go back for a second <clears throat> to the vehicle? RPRS, MNTN, CE. Repairs and maintenance, yep. Why are you projecting that to be, you know, 30% higher than? Yeah, well, we had a very expensive year as far as 2018 goes, um, FY 2018, for um, vehicle repairs and maintenance. Uh, that was one of the final numbers I kind of ballparked this morning when I was plugging these numbers in. Let me see if I can find. Because uh... it jumped between 16 and 17 for obvious reasons and we were just figuring it out. Yep. But then to go from 11 to 20, that's, that's almost 50%. I mean, that's almost 100%. But we, we, had, we, did, we, had, we had problems with the transmission, right? I, it was the the coolant. Well, look, but that's, yeah. let's assume that's not going to happen every year. Oh, sure, yeah. So, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I, yeah, you're absolutely right, John. Um, uh, expense report. Let me, yeah, let me, uh, people repairs and maintenance. Um, yeah, in FY17, vehicle repairs and maintenance cost us uh, $22,000. Then, then what I'm looking at is, is not the actual, it's the plan. Because that does not line up. With oh, this. oh, oh! I, I'm sorry. You're right. No, this is these are this is the budgeted numbers. 
Okay, so I, uh, you're 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 absolutely right. I'm sorry. This is not the actual. Um, this is not actual. This is planned. Yeah, these are the budgets from the previous year, not See, the. Well, but at least for my denseness, to know what should be budgeted for the upcoming fiscal year really doesn't matter what we planned for the previous fiscal right. year. We need to know what we spent on the previous fiscal year, and that's not here. Well, I think if I got this right, it's 6,300 bucks, 6,400 bucks so far. Yeah, I mean, I, there, there should be... 19, I think, last year, right, Mike? Am I looking at the right thing? Yep. And, that, and the number that Trevor's looking at should be in this budget document. It would be nice if we talked before. Uh, yeah, side by if side. We had a, if we had like another column that had yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. what yeah, we actual, spent so far. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, how do we know what, yeah. what reality is? Because the other number that I'm looking at that I, I find interesting, and I don't know, and this is obviously the plan, it's not the actual necessarily, our billing service has gone up over the past three fiscal years. Our budget, our plan has gone up $4,000 a year, and it's scheduled to be another $4,000 this year. Is that, I mean, what's that based on? And, that, and, and if they're increasing their, 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 their receivable by, you know, they're increasing by uh, $16,000 over four years, which is about, you know, 50%. Yeah, they, so that's a percentage of of what we collect. So at if our yeah yeah I mean it, as our collections have gone up over the past four years, naturally that number would go up as well. Is what I'm saying. Okay, so we're anticipating that our collection, and again, this is where the, the actual would be really beneficial. Yeah 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 yeah, and I can yeah I, that's easy for me but, to plug in. So so you're assuming that our collections go up 12% a year. If these numbers, by going up $4,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, and I can, I've got all this stuff. I can totally, I can plug all this in. This is. Okay. That would just be really helpful. Yeah, oh, oh, of course, of course. This is the, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, this is the budget sheet that, um, the Deerfield Town Accountant supplies, so we can track, so we can track the changes from year to year as far as the budget goes. So we as can far see. As the budget, but again, yeah, I mean, exactly. But it doesn't cares, reflect the right. Here's what was budget um, last year. It's the what was spent. Um, what you want to do is we we have basically we have about a ten percent increase in the number of runs, right, Zach, every year. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean. We have. So we probably. have had. Yeah. I mean, you can't. I mean, it's, you can't no. say a hundred percent. But we've had an increase every year. So Zach is correct to increase the billing because it's charged on the number of billings that we do. Yeah. That uh, for and that may be. And I'm not arguing that. I just we just need to see it on the back. I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I can like well, FY sixteen we collected three hundred and ninety three, and then FY seventeen we were up at like five hundred. Um, so, and collected through the agency, not through normal collection. Yeah, that's just like that's that's billing for our calls. What are you asking? Well, that's what the agency collected for us. So we're not saying debt collection. We're saying just normal collection. Correct. I, I mean, yes, they get yeah. a percentage of that. So if we yeah. next year have one run, they will collect like five bucks. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And and we are we are we've ended the first quarter. Jonathan, we've ended the first quarter, and we're and we have expended, you know, about the right amount. Right. Okay. Have the percentages that they're charging gone up, Zach? No. Okay. See, that's the information that is yeah. helpful for this, because then we got to know because then we know whether we're being gouged or not. And right. Right. Through through October. 
of, of the balance that we had coming forward on the billing. We had 34,000 budgeted, uh, or you know, in the billing account, and we spent 8,875 okay. so far. All right, so let's just see it in this document. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. And while we're on that billing subject, yeah, maybe it's time to see what's out there for billing agencies again. Um, yeah, we did a, a couple of years ago RFQ for quotes, right? For a couple of years ago, and we can. Is that how we wound up with Com Star? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can look at that. Good cost. It, uh, you know what would be good, Zach, is just to reach out into your network and see who is using somebody besides Comstar, mm -hmm. and then just feel them out on, on how they feel about it, and then we'll put out an RQ. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I already I know who the other players are. I okay. know what people think. Yeah, it's it's. Um, All right. Yeah, there's. I, I just that information is good for Wendy to craft the RQ because it's. You have, if there's known problems, you want to be able to have that addressed in your RFQ. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know the last time the RFQ went out, um, the rates were the same, and our current one offered services the other one couldn't. Um, but. Good to know. Got anything else for us, Mr. Smith? That was a mouthful. Just a, a thing for the agenda perhaps for next time. We've talked about it a little bit in the past, and then again, it's something that Trevor and I saw when we went to this um, MMA event in Northampton a couple months ago. Um, the issue about billing from the state legislation is going to come up, and I wouldn't pretend to know how to explain it, but in terms of what we, how we can bill and what we can bill, mm -hmm. Do you remember this conversation better than I do? I, I, what I did is I sent, I had Zach um, forward to all the account administrators. Remember, Zach, I had you forward the alert, mm -hmm. the MMA alert. The MMA alert. Yeah, and we were supposed to write, all of us write letters. Is, but, but, but you know what, Carolyn, be careful here. And, and again, I, I, I want to be a caveat that I may not be fully aware. I'm not entirely sure that the MMA is on our side on this one. No, I agree. That's why I asked Zach to get the information and then forwarded it for us to write letters. Because but to write letters not on behalf of what the MMA is suggesting, right. right. no. the opposite, based no. on what we... Based on what, on Zach, what Zach feels is favorable, because I don't understand it all either, so I wanted to come... You're referring to the law that they're proposing to pay right. the patient instead of paying the yes. service. Yes. Right. I personally Which that would be a we should be disaster. Disaster. So, yes, total disaster. So I wanted us to have letters, but Zach was going to um, give us the, the correct way to make it for us to, to write the letter in the correct manner. Right. We should always be wearing the white hat. We should never be wearing the black hat. And, and people who are billing, that's, that's their job to wear the black They're the bad guys, and we should not be in that. Well, mm -hmm. it, I, I just don't see how they could any any community should chase to, to chase down your money. I mean, what a but, disaster! But, well, we do it for taxes all the time, but but we shouldn't be we shouldn't be going after. It's just another reason why the patient won't be looking for the service. It's not good public safety or public health right. policy, and I don't understand why they're supporting it the way they are. I don't see how it's a cost saver. I don't. I, it just no benefit. It would be disastrous for a service like this. It would be disastrous. It would be awful. It would be disastrous for our town. It would cost us a lot more money. And what do you do? Put a credit card machine in the back of the ambulance? Right. Right. Well, I mean, it's almost it's like ridiculous. that at the hospital. Right. But, I know, yeah. but, but and look how uncomfortable it is. It, it's just, and and, and yeah. then you you're put in a position where a patient who who you know may be in arrears. You show up, oh, you know what? You're not going to pay again. I'm not taking you this time. Mm -hmm. okay. Hopefully we don't get there. Well, exactly. But So we really need to pay attention to that as a group and try to mobilize other groups like this. And what, the other thing I sent to Zach this, this week was the... You guys um, have to excuse me because I have to work. Thank um, you, Jonathan. They were looking Happy for comment on the 
two M EMTs or one EMT and a driver kind of thing. And I, so yeah, I there's, appreciated your comment on that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, I spent a, a pretty long that. email not really saying anything, right? I mean, the, well, you did. It kind of went back and forth on pros yeah, and cons, which uh, is, made sense. There's legislation that actually it was it was talked about in the recorder recently. Um, yeah. And they quoted the Charlemont uh, EMS director, and that legislation I think came out of Berkshire County originally. Um, and it's basically the standard right now is that you need to have two EMTs on an ambulance in order to transport a patient to the hospital. The thinking being that you have two providers there and if you're out on your own, so right. if, if one has a question or you know, needs some input, you've got somebody else there who's trained. Um, the legislation, it would be to allow um, one of those providers to be at a lower level, at a first responder level. Right. The thinking being, the they're just driving anyway. That, they don't have enough right. people showing yeah. up and it's a small town. Right, so like at the paramedic level, we have one paramedic on the truck and one basic on the truck, and you don't need two paramedics. Like right. You once had two. People came around and said, you know, we don't need two paramedics. Does not make any sense? Um, Not much. So there's, there's a lot of discussion back and forth. Um, there's a lot of opinions on both sides of the aisle. Uh, the, it's targeting communities just like we experience in South County where you just don't have the responders anymore. You don't right. have the local responders. So there's a, there's a very real problem, which is... Charlemont is really... Sure <laughs> we have a very real problem, which is we don't have those local responders, and it means that when people call 911 and they're depending on local volunteers, they're not there. Right. Um, and so that's the problem. Um, the question is then, how do you address the problem? Um, and this is one way of addressing it. Um, for a small community. Well, yeah, but that's uh, how we got our waiver. So yeah, I, Deerfield EMS actually benefited from a waiver in regards to this very same thing years ago, um, and we used it as a stopgap as a plan moving forward. That right now we can't meet this minimum standard of two EMTs, but we have a plan to. But in the interim, can we maybe you know right. use a stopgap? And we were granted a waiver for that. Um, and we were able to just keep it going for a while. Right, and and then we added staff and. You know, eventually we have 24-7 paramedic right, coverage. Right. Um, so this, instead of the waiver procedure, would be legislation. Um, I'll save you like all the wonk stuff. I mean, if you want to hear somebody get wonky about something, I will talk to you about regulations all day long. I'll meet you another time. Yeah. Um, uh, there are. After he has his operation. Right. Oh, there are that. strong and valid arguments on both sides of that aisle, and I would encourage people to listen to their local directors or local experts about what makes the most sense for their community. Yeah. Um, as far as South County goes, that legislation isn't going to affect us. Correct. Um, the small so, town summits I was going to in Charlemont, that was, they were really pushing this. Yeah. And it was their legislation, they were pushing their, yeah. their local representatives um, to help. Yeah, so the, the other communities know know what will benefit them better than yep. than I would, so I'm, I'm going to refrain from... Yep, no, it's good. Thank you. ...conclusion on that. Anything else to come before the board? No, no. Entertain a motion to... Motion to Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 655. Six.